Hello, my name is Mira Balzhuk from the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. And I am Tamila Kavotkanikua from Gdańsk University of Technology in Poland. We are members of the European Network of Open Education Librarians. Welcome to the third episode of our series dedicated to the UNESCO recommendation on open educational resources, OER. In the following weeks, we will present you with five open education bites. Each of the bites will be dedicated to one of the five UNESCO recommendations. We will keep it short and digestible, a delicious bite of open education for you. Today, we'd like to dive deeper into the first area of action addressed by the recommendation, namely the one on capacity building. Let's take a closer look at it together. According to UNESCO, capacity building in OER encompasses the following objectives. Developing the capacity of all key education stakeholders to create, access, reuse, repurpose, adapt, and redistribute OER, as well as to use and apply open licenses in a manner consistent with national copyright legislation and international obligations. Of all of the five actions of the recommendation, libraries are carrying out capacity building activities the most. This is where libraries can really come into their own. They can directly help member states and the higher education institutions implement the capacity building area of the recommendations and uh, are central to this process. So how is capacity building in OER being implemented by academic libraries in Europe? To answer this, let's take a look at the findings and recommendations of the annual report Open Education in European Libraries of Higher Education, commissioned by Spark Europe in 2021. The aim of this report is to explore what work is being done by academic librarians to implement the UNESCO OER recommendation. The survey addresses the first area of action, capacity building, by asking libraries about their engagement with open education, their library open education advocacy activities, and the skills they need to deliver open education and OER services. Let's first discuss library engagement with open education. According to the report, libraries continue to lead or support open education in equal measure and lead in areas close to their core work. We are seeing an increased number of libraries start focusing on OER, and some are taking on more of a leadership role in open education. So what could be done to help enhance library engagement with open education? To start with, libraries can raise awareness of open education and the UNESCO OER recommendation in their institutions. They can do this by using advocacy tools, such as the NOL OER benefits and presenting them as part of trainings. They could hang up posters or share leaflets with colleagues. Uh, these could be fellow librarians, open science colleagues, teachers or students, for example. Libraries and librarians should also continue taking leadership in open education. They can contact and talk to other movers and shakers and open education leaders in the field, organize events to discuss open education leadership, or talk to their institution's open science leaders on how change was achieved. To get this moving, to experiment and or to show what's possible, explore opportunities within your library or institution for seed funding projects to kickstart efforts if the fundings are there, you might even establish a grant program to create OER. Something that might be even easier to do uh, is to see if you might be able to get library funds earmarked for work on open education. Let's move on now to library open education advocacy. In their open education advocacy efforts, European libraries use a range of strategies. What we mean by advocacy is how libraries communicate when encouraging change toward more open education practice. They collaborate with colleagues working in open access and open science areas from different institutional departments. They actively advocate for open education and OER by using digital communication and training. They also initiate and participate in personal and informal meetings and consultations. 
So what are service recommendations in the field of advocacy? First of all, libraries should help gradually change the institutional mindset on open education by exploring, sharing, adopting, and adapting open education practices. Such practices can include redesigning courses with the help of OER, empowering open pedagogy projects in which students co-create and share open materials and data sets, engaging in societal outreach activities and cross-institutional collaborations. Libraries can integrate these best practices into the narratives they tell to demonstrate the value of open to teaching staff and management, students and didactic experts, policy officers and educational professionals. Libraries can change the culture around open by advocating for open education, OER, through their websites, presentations, social media, trainings, activities, as well as lib guides, broader library events, blogs, and newsletters. Librarians are well positioned to identify local open education champions and involve them in advocacy efforts. Think about doing faculty tours and talking to fellow teachers setting up a network of open education ambassadors to multiply advocacy efforts, publishing interviews and podcasts with open education champions on university-wide platforms. Finally, let's talk about library services and the skills we need. Our most recent survey tells us that when delivering their services, libraries are collaborating with academic departments and faculty most, followed by students. Library strength can be found in information literacy, management and storage services, discovery services, and metadata for indexing digital resources. Librarians are utilizing this expertise to collaborate with faculty in finding and integrating OER into courses, their knowledge in metadata to make OER discoverable, and their experience in the repositories to support faculty in sharing OER. So how can libraries enhance their open education services and further develop the librarian skills? Librarians can already use their existing skills, such as collection management, knowledge of copyright and open licenses, training provision, co-creation of materials to enhance library services around open education. Librarians can engage in the reuse, adoption, adaptation, remixing, and co-creation of OER together with faculty. Examples of such open resources could be open textbooks, course packs, complementary materials, tutorials, videos, to name a few. Libraries uh, can encourage their staff to follow trainings in open skills. OER reuse, adaptations, remixing, creation and instructional design. This skill set will be necessary in the future to ensure librarians can collaborate more effectively with teaching staff. Such trainings could be developed internally, building up on already existing materials or requested from external partners and platforms. Librarians should also take a proactive role and identify the skills they have and also those additional skills they might need for open education and OER. This should then be reflected in their professional development plans and monitor upscaling opportunities. This was a closer look at the specifics of the first area of action, building the capacity of stakeholders in OER and recommendations to libraries for implementing it. We encourage you to join our efforts and start organizing these activities at your academic library. Thank you for listening to the third Open Education Bite. The next four will explore other areas of action of the UNESCO recommendation on open educational resources. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.